Felix Serrales improved the ideal opportunity to get right back into contention. He claimed three podiums, including a win. It's a weekend that, you know, I don't think anybody else might not have for, for a long time. It was it was a really good weekend overall and I was just able to, to stay out of trouble and, and finish in the podium in, in, in every race. Well, now the championship battle is well alive. The top three separated by just 10 points. And as for Carlos Sainz, an expensive weekend sees him drop to fifth. Spa is again a round of the European Formula 3 championship, being led by Raffaele Marciello, the young Italian that the Ferrari team have their eyes on. Uh, I am only 17, so I'm very young, and uh, I don't know. For sure, if I win this championship, I, I don't continue in this championship, but uh, I am Italian, so Ferrari for me is my dream, and uh, I can work with uh, the Ferrari team, with, uh, I can make gym with Alonso, I can speak with the engineer of Ferrari, and uh, I can uh, learn uh, every day from this situation. It's time for the first race here at Spa, and the beady-eyed amongst you will notice two things. Number one, it's a massive grid. Number two, it's incredibly sunny. In fact, it's extremely hot, over 30 degrees here, which means the track is going to be very warm, and the tyres are going to be hot, so it should be nice and fast. Now, as for the front three, I'm delighted to say they're all from the British Formula 3 series, and let's take a look. In third place, we've got Alex Lynn. Then in second, looking to really get back into the championship here, it's Carlos Sainz Jr. And at the front, the man who's really starting to make a name for himself, particularly in the last few races is Felix Serrales. Round 18 of the Cooper Tires British Formula 3 International Series. An inspirational pole for Felix Serrales ahead of all the British and European rivals. Carlos Sainz Jr. outside front row from Alex Lynn. Good start from the two Fortec men. Three Fortec men on the right hand side of the green. Lynn on the grass up to La Source. That's not a great start, but he's inside Serrales. It's Carlos Sainz with the lead. Three wide behind. Hannes Van Asseldon goes very wide on the left hand side. And with Jasmine Jafar, Van Asseldon's just come back on on the left. On the right hand side, that's Alex Lynn. Ooh, we're going inside him and Daniel Juncadella. No, not two of them there into Eau Rouge. Dusty offline. Dirt gets kicked up by Van Asseldon. It's Sainz that leads them up the Kemmel Strait. On board now in seventh place with Jack Harvey. Right in front, you can see Alex Lynn. It is Sainz that leads. Felix Serrales, car number one, pulls out wide. Daniel Juncadella up to third on the straight, and it looked as though Jafar was trying for fourth to get by Van Asseldonk. Everybody jockeying for position. It's two litre single seaters give away a big toe with Spike Goddard in the national class. And in the middle of a massive field of cars battling in perfect conditions here at Spa. Spike Goddard third in the national class. Newcomer Pedro Pablo Calvimonte in front of him. And the black and blue car just ahead. That is our national class leader, Dubashen Padiachi. And look at this for a view. Sweeping down into Pouar. Flat out almost in top gear. Ooh, drifting out wide onto the dirt. He's very dirty out there. First of all, the Astro turf flings you off, then you get the dirt on your tyres. Red and yellow car there was Adley Fong pushing him down to fourth in the national class, as it is still Carl Sainz that leads. They're sweeping down this modern part of the Spa Grand Prix circuit. It starts and finishes on the old public roads. You can see that in the background as they start to climb from the lowest part of the track. The old public road circuit comes in on the left-hand side. Now they're treading on the same tarmac has been used by stars since the 1960s. Absolutely flat out here. It's a combination of very high speed corners that demand grip and long straights that demand minimum wing and then into the bus stop where everybody scrabbles for grip. Good view from Carlos Sainz. A clear track in front of him past the pit lane. And he's got Felix Serrales in second place. Top European driver is Daniel Juncadella in third spot, the pale blue and white. Then turquoise and white, that is Jasmine Jafar ahead of Alex Lynn and Jack Harvey. 
Leaders sweeping out at La Source and Junkadella going very wide on the runoff area. He can't do that too often. He'll end up with a penalty. Here is Felix Serrales challenging the leader, Carlos Sainz. Junkadella, Jafar and the rest. Good battle right behind Jack Harvey for seventh place. Michael Lewis and Tom Blomqvist just coming into shot of the background. In fact, it's a four-car train. Sainz towing Serrales up the hill. Felix goes outside. Can't get through. And Jafar challenges Junkadella. Jafar there, still fourth in that number 22 car on the road, but third in British Championship points. So important not to get tied up battling with the Europeans. The Jazzman is wise enough to know that. Blue car, that's Richard Bradley, who's racing in the Japanese F3 at the moment. He's here with Carlin, comes on in front of Spike Goddard. There's dirt all over the place. Lots of heavy rain in Belgium, as everywhere else in Europe, early in this European summer. That means the runoff area is particularly susceptible to washing onto the track. And there you saw again dirt being kicked up everywhere. Looking there at Alex Lynn, the red and white car, just ahead of red, white and blue Jack Harvey there, fifth and sixth. This distance, all the cars will be picking up a tow up the Kemmel Strait, and here as well, Carlos Sainz Jr. Long look in his mirrors to find out where Felix Serralis has got to to see if he needs to defend and how much he needs to defend for the bus stop. As you turn in from the driver's extreme left of the track, right across the width of it, and if somebody's coming up the inside, you've got to know they're there. Whoops! All too easy to outbreak yourself. Pedro Calbimonte does that, and through goes Dubash and Padiachi to retake the national class lead, and I think he's in trouble here. Pedro, slow off the corner, yes, by Goddard, that's his front wheel. He creeps by into second, but only just as they come down to La Source. Oh, contact! He's got Goddard right on his nose, and that lifted Pedro's wheels off the ground. He couldn't stop anymore, and Spike was being shoved into the corner as well. They both did well to avoid Dubash and Padiachi. Lots of intense battles all the way through this field, and none more so than here for the lead. And again, he's got a good run on Sainz, and this time Serralis goes through. Can he keep it on the island? Yes, he does. Bit of a lock-up on the right front. It's very unladen there as you get over the brow and start to turn right, still rolling off the brake and onto the throttle. But it just goes to show what a great circuit this is for Formula 3 cars. There's Sandro Sella, young Swiss in the yellow machine, right in the middle of the pack, racing in the Euro Series. Joe Calvimonte, third now in the national class, make that fourth as Adley Fong creeps around the outside on the exit of Lake Hall, down into Rivage. But titanic battles all the way, but a change of overall leader as Felix Sorales gets in front and Fong makes a crucial error there, has to get off the gas car, weaving around under him. Calvin wants again, that's mine, that's my line, that's my line, but he gets in flat and that means he's going to come out wide. Sainz now dropping away from Serrales. Third is Daniel Junkadella there, the pale blue and white car, European Championship race leader here. And we're on board in sixth position with Jack Harvey, Alex Lynn right in front. So two British Championship contenders. Watch us creep closer, closer closer and then you get to a tipping point where suddenly you start to really rush up behind the car in front and it's right here and he has to just breath the throttle through Blanchimont. Now he's got to duck out or go the long way round and he decides to go the long way. That's good defence from Alex Lynn up to the bus stop and Harvey can't get by but it just shows the power of the tow around here. That's the car in front, punching a hole in the air so your car doesn't have to. Serralis leads, Sainz, Chukadella, Jafar, and then Lynn and Harvey. And they've got Michael Lewis right behind. There is Jack Harvey in the red, white and blue racing steps car. And Lewis all over the back of him. And Michael Lewis, ideally placed here, if he looks into a rouge alongside Jack Harvey, he's a braver man than I. Now he's got a really good run though, keep the momentum out over the brow. Jack Harvey can do nothing about Michael Lewis now. His engine is flat out, he is closing up on Alex Lynn, but Harvey is giving away a toe as well as getting one. He goes around Lynn and Lewis goes the inside and Lynn's got nowhere to go and Harvey gets through and so too does Michael Lewis. National class battle for second now. Pedro Calvimonte right behind Spike Goddard. Through goes Fami Ilias. It's in the main championship class. Calvimonte's going to follow him around the outside. That was close. Saw how wheel to wheel the racing is here. 
was a good move by Pedro Calvimonte. Back up into second place in the national class. Pochin checking the mirrors out there. Little lock up in front. So they'll catch Fami Ilias. Oh, as he drifts out wide, through comes Spike Goddard. What great racing we're having here at Spa. Rushing up to the bus stop with Jasmine Jafar right in front of the battle for second in this first race of the weekend. Daniel Juncadelli, you can just see the tail of his blue and white car attacking Carlos Sainz Jr. Now, both of those racing in the European Formula 3 Championship, and Sainz, the yellow nose, his main focus is the British Series. So actually, he could let Juncadella go if he had to. The race leader heading off down the hill in the red and white car, that's Felix Sorales, the young Puerto Rican, who's already got three race wins under his belt in his rookie season. Not just a British racing, but a Formula 3 racing. Now, Juncadella with the toe on Sainz. Good exit from Eau Rouge is vital. Sainz takes a long look in the mirrors. This is pretty much impossible to defend. The guy behind just uses your car to slingshot him up the straight and around the outside or up the inside. There's nothing you can do. Juncadella up to second. Sainz doesn't lose any British championship points, but he does go a little fraction behind Juncadella in the European F3 series that he is also contesting. And half the field, pretty much European contesters, but in the national class, the battle for second is on again. Spike Goddard came out of Eau Rouge in second, but at the top of the straight that follows it, it is Pedro Pablo Calbimonte, who is back up into second position. Again, Calbimonte, first taste of British Formula 3 International Series racing and what a track it weeks to experience it and again he's going to have to work on the exit of the Lake Holmes by God I come straight back down the inside into Rivage just as he did last lap on board with Jasmine Jafar right in front of him championship rival Carlos Sainz this is the battle for third on the road again the red and white car Felix Sorrell is leading from top European driver Daniel Juncadella Carlos Sainz Jr. in the 31 car really needs to try and keep Jasmine behind. He needs to try and get Felix Sorales behind him as well. But the Spaniard seems to have just lost that little bit of sparkle, that tiny indecipherable edge that kept him nosing in front of the field early in the season. But after this, there will still be another 10 races to go. So it's not even two-thirds distance, but you cannot afford to give any points away. In a way, this is a little bit like Formula One. So many different winners and so many different point scorers that the tiniest advantage may end up being absolutely crucial when he gets to payday and handing out the championship. Jasmine Jafar at the moment knows he's ahead of science in points and could do with getting in front of him again. Once more with Calvin Monte up the Kemmel Strait. Guess who's coming alongside? No, this time it's Adelie Fong. Tries to slipstream up alongside the Bolivian driver. Can't quite find the gap he needs. There is Jasmine Jafar with Jack Harvey up behind him. Jafar just dropping back a little from Carlos Sainz. Now can Jack Harvey use this opportunity to close in? He's in fifth position at the moment. Jafar in front of him in fourth. Harvey came in here just four points in front of Jafar in the championship as the series leader and that would change if Jafar finishes in front of him here so every single point is absolutely vital and the psychology as well if Harvey can just get the jump on Jafar here then that all helps to undermine the Malaysian's confidence but it's got to be done still somehow through the bus stop they go. Again, Felix Sorrell is leading comfortably. Nobody can do much about him. And behind Jasmine Jafar's 22 car, number one, Harvey has got company up the inside. 98, Michael Lewis goes through into the hairpin at La Source. That moves him up into fifth position. Of course, it doesn't affect the British Championship points. He's only racing in European F3. That puts him third of the Euro F3 runners. And that also gives Jack Harvey a great opportunity to, to slingshot back past the American up the straight and try and close the gap to Jasmine Jafar. Noticeable, though, how much the Malaysian has got in front. There is Sainz, 31, 22, turquoise colours of Jafar. Harvey back up to fifth on the road. And once more, in Jafar's wheel tracks. It's not just about a single race win. It's almost a corner-by-corner -corner battle here at Spa. And again, you're seeing that in the national class. 
Pedro Pablo Calvimonte with the red and yellow car of Adley Fong alongside him, almost underneath him, and ooh, passed him into a rouge. That's a little bit of bravery from the Chinese driver. I don't think Pedro particularly wanted to contest a rouge wheel to wheel, but there you go. You have to take it the way it's given. Spike Goddard right behind, and you can see Pedro checking the mirrors, checking, checking, because Goddard will be coming. Is he going to be inside us? As we turn in, and Fong gets it wrong, and Calvin Monte almost goes off as well. Adley in the red and yellow cars got dirt all over the tyres. Well, as that battle continues, so does the three way scrap for fourth position. Looking here at car number one, Jack Harvey. The turquoise and white car just in front. That is fourth place, represented by Jasmine Jafar. Pascal Verlein just ahead of Sven Muller, two of our European contenders, 16th and 17th on the grid. And here is the man that nobody can hold a candle to, fastest race lap and a comfortable lead for Felix Sorales, ahead of Daniel Junkadella there. Carlos Sainz second in the British Championship points. Scorers here ahead of the battle for the third position of the British podium. That is Jasmine Jafar ahead of Jack Harvey. Michael Lewis tracking him. And then the two Fortec cars, Alex Lynn and Pipo Durrani. There's Jack Harvey with the blue nose and the white body. And closing in again on Jasmine Jafar. Michael Lewis is helping perversely. He's not attacking Harvey, but they're two cars quicker together than Jafar's is on his own. That's another of the aerodynamic vagaries. Oh, and Jafar, a little bit naughty there, moved right over. Harvey had at least two wheels on the grass at full speed. That's over 185 kilometers an hour. Scary stuff. And again, the national class battle at the hairpin. And this young driver from Bolivia, nobody necessarily had heard of him before, but boy, they're going to know about him after Spa. Pedro Pablo Calbimonte and Adley Fong again wheel to wheel into a roost, this time Adley with the inside line. And again, they both keep it nice and clean. <laughs> Pedro shaking his head there or just checking both mirrors because he knows he's got company behind. Spike Goddard once more in the slipstream and through he goes. That's just so disheartening, isn't it? When you get a little bit offline through Eau Rouge, you know the car behind is just going to come streaming by like he's in a Hollywood film and he's got another gear. Jack Harvey in fifth. Michael Lewis in sixth position on the road. Lewis currently third of the European Championship point scorers. Harvey fourth of the British Championship point scorers. Right in front of him, third place of the British points would go to Jasmine Jafar. Harvey might as well have a gun sight on the nose of the car, mustn't he? Because he's targeting Jafar above all else now. I think he's got the feel that he's shaken off Michael Lewis, and now he's hunting the Malaysian. And you know what? After Jafar eased him over onto the grass there, I don't think Harvey will necessarily be in the mood to take any prisoners either. He's very close out of the bus stop chicane, and as they come down start finish straight, Jafar is defending heavily. Harvey will have to go outside. Will he cut back inside at the hairpin at last source? Jafar crosses the line in fourth, ahead of Harvey in fifth, and Lewis in sixth. Lewis has been caught by Alex Lynn. And on board again with Jack Harvey. Getting out of the slipstream to give clear air to the wings as they drop down into a rouge. And he's got a very good run going there as well. Jasmine Jafar had to stay a little defensive, and that's compromised his line into a rouge. And here comes Jack Harvey. And if Jafar comes over now, there's going to be an almighty accident because Harvey is fully alongside and fully lit. He goes through, fourth place on the road. Jafar will try and counter. And that was a good move by the Malaysian, but he just didn't have the ground. And now Michael Lewis is trying to go around the outside. Jafar on the dirt on the exit somehow holds on. He just needs, oh my goodness me, further back, more action. Sven Muller up the inside and contact there. And that's what could easily happen every time cars get in the braking area. Pascal Berlain eased offline. Adley Fong with nobody alongside him into Eau Rouge. This time he's got Spike Goddard right behind, second and third in national class behind. Lido Dabash and Padiachi and Pedro Calbiamonte. Entirely possible he might just have asked a little bit too much of his tyres. First time in these cars at Spa. But what a great race he's already had. And Goddard trying to use the toe. Can't get around Adelie Fong. Last lap of the race for all these drivers. And 
And that means nobody's going to catch Felix Sorales. Does it mean, though, that Michael Lewis is going to get by Jasmin Jafar? In the end, it doesn't matter much for British Championship points. Jafar now behind Jack Harvey. And look how far away Harvey's got already. Check it flag waves though, it is going to be victory for Felix Sorales, emphatic victory, pole fastest lap and race win. What a dominant performance from the Puerto Rican driver and the Fortec Motorsport team. Carlos Sainz second in British points, Harvey third and a fighting fourth place for Jasmine Jafar with everybody clambering all over him as he comes to the line inches ahead of Alex Lynn. Well, a comfortable victory in the national class for Dubashem Padiachi. Jack Harvey third on the British podium behind Carlos Sainz and our race winner, Felix Sorales. Hey, I didn't expect that we would have so much grip in the rear in the start, but um, I was able to keep P2 into the first corner and I wasn't very uh, worried about it because it's all about the slipstream here. So up to the third lap, I was able to pass Sainz and pull away pretty much.